For this lesson, we're going to be looking at the total area again, but we're going to be looking at a different kind of function, and namely that is a piecewise function. So it's going to be the total area between the curve and the x-axis of a piecewise function. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look and see for example one. If you notice, same example we used when we did the net area or the definite interval. The only difference between this example and that one is that now we're going to find the total area. For the top piece, top, top piece we have x squared plus x, where x is less than zero. And for the bottom piece, we have sine of 2x, for x is greater than or equal to zero. So the question becomes, how do we find the total area when dealing with a piecewise function? It seems kind of complicated. It was pretty complex when we find the definite interval. Now we're going to add a degree of complexity by finding the total area. Well, fortunately, it's not as confusing as it might seem, so let's take a look and see how to solve this. So I think it's always important to take a look at the graph, and um, let's read the question anyways uh, before we look at the graph. It says, determine the total area between the curve of fx and the x-axis on the interval. So this interval is important. We want to go from negative 3 to 3 pi over 2. Remember, you, you really can't find an area or a definite interval unless you're dealing with an interval normally. Now, we, you know, there are cases where it exists on infinity and you have a definite interval. Well, we'll talk about that some other time. All right, so let's take a look at the graph for some perspective. You won't be graphing the function um, as part of the process, but it does help to take a look at the graph. So, you know, we've already looked at this before. Here's kind of a, a, a snapshot of our graph. Now, before, we really didn't care whether or not these pieces that were below the x-axis were negative or positive. What we did with the, the definite interval of a piecewise, we found the definite interval of the first piece, meaning basically this area minus this area. Then we found the definite interval of the second piece, this uh, sine of 2x piece, uh, meaning we counted this as negative. But for total area, we have to find, um, we have to make sure that we, we, we consider these uh, parts below the x-axis as positive. And so, as you can see, all you need to do is determine the uh, net area of each piece of the function and make them positive and then add up those areas. Um, so the, the thing is, is that we have to basically find the total area of each piece. In order to find the total area of each piece, we have to split each piece into more pieces. So don't misread this, this statement. You don't want to find the definite interval of the first piece. You want to find the total area of the first piece by breaking it up into pieces. Whatever pieces are below the x-axis, so for example, this piece, we want to make positive like we did in the last lesson. So step one is going to be to determine the total area of each piece of the function. We want to find the total area between negative 3 and 0. Our first piece is x squared plus x for x for x is less than zero. Choose the first piece of the function because it is defined for x is less than zero. So we know, so just as a refresher, when you find the total area of a function, you want to figure out where it crosses the x-axis first. That way you can take every, you can take the definite integral of each of these sub-pieces and then just take the absolute value of that. And I will ensure that it gives you the total area, not just the definite integral or the net area. So what you're going to do is factor this, pull out an x, you get x equals 0, solve for that, you get x equals negative 1. And now it crosses the x-axis of those two pieces. Now for x equals 0, it won't matter because that's where the, the piece changes anyways. Negative 1, it will matter. So for our first piece, we're going to break it into two sub-pieces. All right, here's our first sub-piece, and here's our second sub-piece, that little piece that was uh, right below the graph right here. It's going to be our second sub-piece. So it's a piece of a piece. So we're just going to take the definite integral of this function on each of these intervals and then just make take the absolute value of that because we're dealing with total area. Remember, whenever you're dealing with total area, any, anything under the x-axis is considered positive. So I'm not going to talk too much about the um, algebra. I will just say you use the reverse power rule and then make sure you plug in your limits, upper and lower limits, and evaluate. So the area of this first piece is right here area of this second piece right here is uh, right here, plugging in 0 and negative 1. 
Doing some math and some algebra, we get 14 thirds plus the absolute value of negative 1 6. And again, going back to the graph, that just means that this is negative 1 6 right here. But we're going to make it positive. Basically, flip it over the x axis. So it's going to become positive 1 6 for the total area. So the total area of our first piece is 29 over 6. Now, again, what that means is algebraically, that's the area, total area of this first piece, x squared plus x, where x is less than 0 from negative 3 to 0. So we do get a fraction back of 29 over 6. Now when we want to find the total area of our second piece from 0 to 3 pi over 2, and that's for our sine of 2x. So again, we want to find the total area of that. We're still under step 1 of finding the total area of each piece. We want to figure out where that crosses the x-axis. Uh, we've done this already when we did the area of a piecewise function, definite interval, but we'll do it again. Uh, we're going to figure out that sine of 2x by taking the arc sine of both sides. Remember, sine equals 0 on the unit circle at intervals of pi, or the x-axis. x equals 0, pi over 2, pi and 3 pi over 2. So it's going to cross the x-axis at these four places now. Again, for 0, it won't matter because that's where the pieces change. But it will matter for these three right here. Um, in fact, um, that very last one, 3 pi over 2, is where it stops. So that one doesn't really matter either, but it is our last piece of interval, so I guess it doesn't matter. It just happens that it crosses the x-axis, the interval right there, right here. So anyway, basically we're going to find the net area of each of these pieces and then take the absolute value of them to ensure that this bottom piece is full, be positive just like the other two. It looks like they have the same area. We've already confirmed that they do when we did the definite integral. So our definite integrals are going to look like this. It's going to go from 0 to pi over 2 of sine of uh, 2x. Now I'm not sure why the integral sign didn't show up here. It looks like it's glitching, but that is the definite, should be the definite integral sign of sine of 2x. In fact, I'll go ahead and just try to fix that here real quick. And the p represents pi. Again, I'm not sure why it's glitching. So first one from 0 to pi over 2, def, uh, definite integral of sine of 2x, we're going to make an absolute value since it's um, total area. Next one goes from pi over 2 to pi, same exact function, make sure you take the absolute value. Third is from pi to 3 pi over 2, and again that comes from our step right here. So we've already found the definite integral of sine of 2x, you can do u substitution. Uh, to find its antiderivative, it's going to be negative one half cosine of two x. Again, you can check that by taking the derivative of this. You'll get sine of two x. The first one, again, we're going to evaluate from zero to pi over two. Same antiderivative for the second one, and go from pi over two to pi. Third one, same antiderivative. It's going to go from pi to three pi over two. All right. So, doing some evaluation here. Uh, the first piece is one <laughs> area of the first piece. Area of the second piece is negative 1, but we're going to take the absolute value of that, so we get positive 1. Area of the third piece is already positive, so taking the absolute value will remain 1. So the total area of our second piece, that sine of 2x piece, is 3. Pretty cool, considering it's so curvy, you wouldn't think it would come out so evenly. Um, now we're going to add up our total areas. Now remember the area of our first piece, uh, the x squared plus x, what's 14 thirds? The area of our second piece is 3. So when we add that up, doing some common denominators, we get 23 over 3. And I like to know what these things are as decimals or approximately. So that's approximately 7.6 repeating. So if we go back and look at our final graph, I just like to look at the graph to confirm. Uh, the total area of this green shaded section, making sure that these areas are also positive is around seven and a half or 7.6 repeating. Again, the steps for this are easy. Just find the total area of each piece of the piecewise function and add those total areas up. So basically what you end up doing is taking each piece and breaking it up into subpieces, taking the absolute value of each of those subpiece definite intervals. That's it for total area of a piecewise function. If you have any other questions about this, let me know.